The Vietnam War was one of the most bloody wars that the U.S. has been in in the 20th century. The war was fought against North Vietnam and South Vietnam, with the U.S. assisting the South. The U.S. started helping the South by giving supplies, but in March of 1965, the U.S. activated their first troops in Vietnam. The North Vietnamese, or Viet Cong Army, used guerrilla warfare. This was a tactic that most of the U.S. soldiers had never seen before and had not been trained against. This caused many of the battles the U.S. troops to be in, either defeats or close calls. During the Vietnam War, both sides of the war took prisoners, or POWs. North Vietnam took around 700 U.S. prisoners during the war. They used the prisoners to try and get vital information that would help them win the war. The prisoners were tortured when they did not cooperate. Because of this, many soldiers wanted to talk to their fellow prisoners, but this was against what the North Vietnamese officials wanted. Any form of communication was a chance to be caught and tortured. A form of communication called tap code was invented by three U.S. soldiers who had realized that it was time to start talking with fellow prisoners and resist the North Vietnamese. In 1964, North Vietnam took their first prisoner, Everett Alvarez. Alvarez was taken prisoner just after the U.S. activated its troops in Vietnam. Earlier that day, he had assisted a U.S. destroyer in the Gulf of Tonkin, and he'd flown back to base awaiting his next orders. He was told to go on a bombing run near the capital of North Vietnam, Hanoi. During that run, his plane was shot out of the sky and he was taken prisoner by the North Vietnamese people. Many other pilots suffered the same fate as Alvarez. Once at the prison, the POWs were brought to an interrogation room where a high-ranking Vietnamese official would ask them questions about what they were doing on their last mission. Anyone who refused to answer the question was punished. The North Vietnamese people tried to get the prisoners to confess what they had done so they could use it for propaganda. During one of these propaganda finding sessions, the North Vietnamese tried to get Jeremiah Dutton to say that the prisons that they were living in were humane and the North Vietnamese were treating them well. During his interview, he blinked in Morse code the word torture. He made sure that all of his answers were what they wanted him to say so they would air it later that night for everyone to see. Navy intelligence picked up on the code and were able to send it to commanders and officers. That way they could see that the North Vietnamese were torturing their prisoners. One of the main reasons prisoners got punished was communication. The North Vietnamese wanted prisoners to feel lonely and forgotten, so talking to each other was quickly shut down. Many forms of communication were used and discovered by the North Vietnamese until they made the mistake of putting Captain Carl Harris, Lieutenant Philip Butler, and Lieutenant Robert Schumacher in the same cell. The three prisoners knew that what they were doing was dangerous. They knew the consequences of being caught, but they also knew how important it was to communicate with fellow prisoners. With a burnt matchstick, they inscribed a 5x5 five five table with all the letters of the alphabet on a piece of toilet paper. The chart they made was a form of communication known as tap code. Prisoners would follow the chart and tap the letters that would make up words to communicate with fellow soldiers. Many acronyms were used, that way sentences did not get too long. The three tested it out in their own cell and realized that when the chart was memorized, they could pass it around the prison. The North Vietnamese guards heard the tapping and went to investigate. They noticed nothing wrong, but decided to separate the three men, just in case. They were split apart and put on different sides of the prison. They then taught their new cellmates the code, and not too long after, almost everyone in the prison knew how to use the code. They used this code to talk about a great number of things. They could talk about family life, what they had been doing in the war up till this point, and what the North Vietnamese guards were doing to them. If they had been tortured, they would tap for the cells around them to hear. 
With the introduction of tab code, the prisoners finally received something that they had never had since their captivity, high morale. Up to this point, they had been separated, beaten, and alone. But now, they could pull together to have hope that they would one day be released. Many U.S. soldiers were taken prisoner of war during the Vietnam War. They lived in terrible conditions, as well as living in the constant fear of not knowing what was going on in the prison or happening in the war itself. Orson Swindle was no exception. Orson was flying a mission over North Vietnam when his plane was shot down. He ejected and slowly fell onto a large field where North Vietnamese people were waiting. When he landed, they beat him up to ensure that he could not escape. He was then given to the North Vietnamese Army, where he was brought to the main prison in Hanoi. Upon his arrival to the prison, he was immediately interrogated, and in this session, he learned what it was like to be a prisoner of the Vietnam War. He was able to get out of the first session without suffering too much. He was brought to his cell and learned very quickly how life would be from then on. His cell was very dirty, it would not be cleaned out his entire time in the prison. The food was terrible, and he was treated badly as well. During his time as a prisoner, he was moved between three different prisons, but ended back in Hanoi. When he had left the Hanoi prison, prisoners would need to wait for the guards to leave, and they would start whispering. When arriving, he noticed that no one was talking, everyone was tapping. He quickly picked up on the tap code and started using it along with everyone else. Orson stated that communication with fellow prisoners was something that everyone had to do to ensure their survival through the tough times ahead. When the last troops had been pulled out of Vietnam, most of the prisoners in North Vietnam were freed and only a few remained. A year after the withdrawal, Richard Nixon declared that all of the troops, including prisoners, had been freed from Vietnam with great honor. Out of the 2,500 total troops thought of as missing, only 1,600 were accounted for. A total of 687 U.S. prisoners were released after the war, with around 50 have died from the torture and inhumane conditions that they had been living in. The longest held prisoner was Captain Floyd Thompson, who was captured on March 26, 1964. He was held in these prisons for roughly nine years of his life. For most prisoners, communication with their fellow prisoners is what kept them going. The Vietnam War may have gone on for only 19 years, but in that time, some people's lives had changed forever. North Vietnamese did not give the names of all the people they held, so anyone who was taken prisoner was labeled MIA, missing in action. When they freed the POWs, it helped the government determine who was missing in action and who had been a prisoner. During the war, the treatment of U.S. prisoners was brought up, but nothing ever came from it. People may think that after the war, the treatment of prisoners would have been brought back up again, but it never was. The U.S. was tried for a few war crimes that involved the lives of innocent North Vietnamese deaths. In 1991, the U.S. and a small group of allies declared war against Iraq. The conflict lasted for only a month, and in that time, 23 U.S. prisoners were taken. They were treated just as badly as the prisoners in Vietnam. In the beginning, they were tortured and put in terrible living conditions. As we can see, not much has changed in the way prisoners are treated, even after the Geneva Convention in 1949. If anything can be taken away from this, it is that through communication, past prisoners have made us all realize that the treatment of prisoner of wars in the future needs to change.